Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I actually have two lures from last week's video and you'll notice the big crankbait that was there is gone. That went out yesterday to the winner of the contest. So in this week's video, I wanna make a lure that as it drops through the water column has a really nice big wobble or wiggle, whatever you wanna call it. I just think that when you're pausing, it's nice to have the lure doing a little work for you as you're doing your retrieve through the water. Especially if you've got some foil or a reflective surface on that lure, because it really sends out a big flash and draws fish from a long way off. Now, a while back, actually, I think it's been a couple of years, I made a video on exactly this topic, on what makes a lure wiggle when it's going through the water. And I made these two sort of lure dummies to show you exactly what's going on. This lure is really wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And this lure is really narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. The idea being the wide part of the lure is at the point where the water flow is departing and that blunt departure tends to cause turbulence. And that turbulence causes that lure to sort of wobble back and forth. Let me show you one more time. So here's the one that's fat at the bottom. It should have almost no wobble at all. Let's see that again. And here's the one that's wide at the top and you should be able to see a little bit of a wobble as it gets close to the bottom. It's pretty subtle, but I think you can see it. And it's the fact that this thing has a really subtle movement that's the challenge for this video. I wanna make a lure that has a really aggressive wobble. And I think the key to it is gonna be making a lure that's really narrow, thin from top to bottom, kind of long, and still has that fat spot on the top. Let me show you what the design's gonna look like. All right, here it is. It's gonna have a classic stick bait kind of shape. And what you'll notice is that I'm keeping the widest point right along the center line. And so it's fattest looking down from the top and it's thickest looking on its side right there in the middle. If you look at this cross section, you can see it has that widest part on top and narrow on the belly. It's gonna be 0.65 inches at its thickest part and it's gonna be three quarters of an inch tall at its tallest part. And it'll be five inches long. And this little fin on the belly is there to enhance that movement because I really do want this thing to have a pretty aggressive wobble as it drops through the water. All right, so this is the block of wood I'm gonna use. It's a piece of cherry wood. It's about seven inches long and about three quarters of an inch in thickness. I like cherry, it's, it's good and hard, easy to carve, and it's got enough density that I won't have to add a lot of weight to it. So if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that I like to calculate the density of the wood I'm gonna use to use it to calculate how much lead I gotta put in the lure to make it behave the way I want it to behave. And here's one that's cherry, and the density is 0.686 grams per cubic centimeter. So now I'm going to go ahead and just uh, score a line right on the center line and I'll fill that in with a pencil line too. And that'll help me establish the, uh, the next line which is the contour lines of the plan view. And to establish those I'll go ahead and make sure I mark the widest point and then use the curves again to get that curve. There you go. Now it's just a matter of getting that excess material taken off. All right, so it's still pretty rough. It's time to take it out to the belt sander and get this thing shaped the rest of the way. And whether you use a carving knife or some sort of grinder, rasp, or sander, or whatever, you probably will wanna have some kind of guiding lines on your lure. And these lines are really just something that I can eyeball down and make sure that I'm taking off the same amount on either side and top and bottom. So I end up with a nice symmetric shape.
as you can see, uh, I'm down to just the center line that I drew. And I'm eyeballing and seeing how close I'm coming with my grinding to that center line and trying to make it even on both sides. All right, I've got a lot more to do on this. I'll get back to you when I'm down to just hand sanding. All right, I've, I've given this thing a really fine sanding with 220 and it really came out super smooth. And you can see the shape, the general shape there, pretty symmetric, narrower on the belly and flatter on the top. And it's got a nice cigar shape and you can see definitely the wide spot is in the middle. I'm just gonna hand sketch these carving lines. I'm not that much of an artist, but I can get somewhat clean lines on here. And I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to carving anyway. So I'm not too worried that these lines aren't gonna be perfect. with the way the carvings turned out. Now I'm pretty much done taking wood off this thing so I can weigh it. And I'm gonna use that weight to calculate the volume of the lure and figure out how much weight to put in it. And then I'm gonna do my new favorite thing to do with carved lures and that is put foil over this thing so that the foil gets embossed by the carving. I think it always looks really cool. 18.16 grams. And we'll divide that by the density of the wood, which is 0.69. And we get 26.32 cubic centimeters. All right, let's put the foil on. mind anything that we do to add weight or take weight away is going to affect how much weight we put in it. This particular lure is not going to be super critical because I want it to sink and sink pretty fast but the other really critical factor to get this thing to wobble really well is to have it sink perfectly level. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes and install the hook hangers and the tie on eye and we'll put the hooks on temporarily and see where the center of mass is on this so that we can put the weight in it. And for this lure, I'm going to go ahead and make my own twist eyes out of this stainless steel leader wire. It's 174 pound test and it's 0.285 inches in diameter. And if there's anything that you see me using, whether it's tools or materials, I try to keep an up-to-date uh, Amazon link of the best price I can find. No guarantees here. And I keep all that in my Amazon store. There's a link for that in the description. All right, I've glued the uh, eyes in with a little bit of two-part epoxy and let it set up for about 20 minutes. All right, I'm gonna use this level line and plumb line I just drew and I'm gonna hang the lure by this piece of tape with all the little holes in it until I find the spot on this tape that hangs it perfectly level. And that's just a little bit head up. That's pretty doggone close right there. I'd like it a little more head down. So I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. 
that actually looks pretty good to me. It's slightly head down, but I'm going to go with it. At this point, I realized that I made a mistake and did not hang the hooks on this thing. So I went back and hung the hooks. You have to have the hooks on here when you do this, or it won't be accurate. So I'm going to mark where the plumb line crosses the body. And that line is the center mass for this thing. I'll use that line to center all the weight that I put in it. All right, so the lure is 19.53 grams, and I know that the volume is 26.32 cubic centimeters. That means that just to be suspending, it has to weigh 26.32 grams. Let's go ahead and weigh the hooks that I'm gonna use and the split rings along with the lure, and we get 21.87. So that means I need to add about five and a half grams to this lure just to make it suspend, but I want it to sink. So I typically add an extra 10 to 20% to get it to sink slow or to sink moderately. I want this thing to sink fast. So I'm gonna add 100% more than the five and a half grams. So I'm gonna add 11 grams. So double the amount. And those three little lead weights add up to 11.03 grams. We just gotta drill holes and put those in. All right, I've marked the three locations for those three lead weights. One right where we marked the center of mass and then the other two equal distance from that mark. So there they are, all installed. All right, got it all sanded down. And now before I get too far along here, I need to put the fin in. So I've already drawn the little line. I'm gonna take the Dremel tool and cut a slot. Alright, so before I clear coat it, I'm going to go ahead and get some black paint down into the bottom of these textures. So I'll just spray it with some black paint and then wipe it off and hopefully I'll get some nice contour lines in there. So it should be pretty subtle, just barely noticeable. I'll do the other side now. All right, I just put a clear coat on it. I'm gonna put it in the chamber for a while so I can get it set. It'll take about 40 minutes for this thing to actually be completely set and then we'll start painting. Be nice. And I think we got a nice clear coat on this thing. Good enough at least to smooth out the wood fuzz and hide those foil seams. All right, so I'm gonna start off with this paint job by just painting the bottom white. And I want the line to be sort of crisp, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape that bottom off. But as usual, I'm gonna have the extractor going, so it's just gonna be background music. And if I need to explain anything, I'll do a quick voiceover.
I was going for sort of a pilchard color scheme. Now I gotta wait for that heavy coat of polyacrylic uh, to dry before I put a clear coat on it. But I got one in there already setting up. I've actually made two, almost identical. The other one I made just slightly smaller. Actually, it's only like a quarter inch shorter, but it's a little narrower at the belly. I'm trying to make it a little more extreme. We'll see which one has the bigger wobble. All right, I'm gonna give it a nice thick clear coat and we'll put it in there with its partner to set up. All right, so when that one is done, I'll show you both of them. We'll drop them in the test tank and see much, how much wiggle we get on the drop. I'm hoping my theory is right and we get a nice heavy wiggle. All right, these things should be ready to rock in about an hour. That looks pretty nice. Now the other one I made, I painted with a similar paint scheme, just different colors, with uh, copper on top and gold on the bottom. So those are pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put some hooks on it and then we'll drop them in the tank and see which one wobbles the most. Turns out my test tank is way too short to really capture the action. On this first one, you can barely see it start moving at the bottom and it bangs against the wall on that one. I think if it had a little farther to fall, it would pick up more speed and wobble more. This is the other one, the more narrow one, and it definitely wants to wobble a little more. You can really see it near the bottom. All right guys, I came out here intending to show you, try to show you what this looks like underwater. It has a pretty good wobble. Not as good as this one though. This one I made just a little narrower at the bottom and that apparently is the better option for these things to get them to wobble. So I'm not done making these guys. I'm still gonna work on getting something with a little harder wobble than this one. It wobbles pretty nice, but it takes a little bit of distance for it to pick up enough speed for it to really get wobbling. And this guy, I think I just made him just a little too fat. Just when I think I got this stuff down, I get humbled. These are still really nice lures, and I'm really looking forward to using these things out in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, it's starting to rain, and it's been thundering, and there's been a couple of lightning bolts, so I'm going to head in. So if you guys have a lure that actually has a really good wobble when it's dropping, let me know what you think is making it do it, and maybe I'll incorporate that into the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next Friday.